So iOS 26 is out as a first public beta. And we don't want to talk about liquid S, I mean liquid glass in this video. What we want to talk about is the improved new camera UI. And because my yeah, testing device for iOS uh, versions, the iPhone 10s is not supported anymore by the new iOS 26. I have to go to the next best thing because I'm not really an iPhone user and that is probably the oldest phone that is still supported this year is the iPhone SE 2020. So the second edition basically that is still supported and is indeed running the new iOS 26 and in a second I can show it to you. There we go. So this version here it is running as you see as a beta 4 I think and yeah I will demonstrate to you the new camera application on iOS 26. When you open up the camera application for the first time this is the brand new interface that you will see very minimalistic interface we have the viewfinder, of course, we have the shutter button here, and then we have just two buttons here, photo and video. Very easy, very minimalistic. In the top right corner, we have an option menu and the flash that we can turn on. And this one here will then turn on either automatically uh, or off. There's no other option, so not like um, flash that you can always have on. If you go to video, you have a bit of more options. First of all, the viewfinder gets larger, then we have on the top left corner, you might see it here, we have the possibility to change finally our settings, not just by tapping to switch between the different settings, but you tap it once and you will see we get a nice menu where I can directly go, I want 4K and 60 frames per second. So I don't have to tap through to get to my uh, rate. Then we have some other settings just like here that are hiding here, like the flash and the exposure. I'm not sure why the flash is there because the flash is also on the top right corner and I have the possibility to turn it on. But it's not working here for some reason for the video. Maybe only when I start recording video. Let's go. Still not recording with the flash on. So a bit of a weird thing. Otherwise, when I start recording, we have... Now it's turning on the flash, as you see here. So yeah, this is now working with the flash. So it's a bit of a buggy still. We have a pause button here and it will also turn down the flash. When I go and start again, the flash will turn on again. So nice user interface, I think. Very easy to use if it works. And then if you want to switch to all your other modes, you have to press and hold. And then you can see other modes, like for example, you have slow-mo here that you can go to. It will start to flicker a lot because it's like, what is it, 720p that this iPhone SE can only do at 240 uh, frames. And then we have time lapse as well that we can switch to. And it's a bit of, yeah, counterproductive, I would say, because I want them to swipe to the right to go through the different modes. No, you're just having like a pill or a piece of glass that you uh, take and then you swipe over to go to the category that you want to go to. And you can see it's stopping at portraits, but there's another category. If I let it go, it's going into panorama mode which is like um, yeah, not visible at all when you scroll. The same goes for the time-lapse. You can only see the apps. <laughs> Reminds me a lot of the liquid S. Now, yeah, uh, this is this. Then we have some yeah, hidden options. We have this button here that brings us our options, but we can also just swipe up on the menu or just press the photo button again to show us more options. Like we can still take live photos. Uh, we can turn it off or have it automatically. We have a timer that we can set. And there you can see it's very user friendly for one finger usage because everything is on the bottom. For larger screens, it makes sense. For this screen, I can like touch everything with one hand, so it's not a huge uh, problem for me. In terms of video options, we only have the flash and the exposure. In terms of photo options, we have a bit more, like also the exposure, the filters. So yes, the filters are still there, but you can see they're very different. So it's a bottom swipe to change between the various different filters. So what we had before, that was a little bit like we swipe here on the big screen and see the various different filters is gone. And we have again the traditional filter swiping menu here. 
So yeah, this is for something for people who like the old menu. And then we have aspect ratio that we can set up. It's just a toggle that you can switch between. So it's not very consistent because here I would like to have also maybe a menu item that allows me to directly switch to the right aspect ratio. But the cool thing here is that it allows me in this state to set almost all my settings that I want to set. What is still missing, however, are things like, if I can also like swipe like this, as you can see here from left to right, which is also possible, but it's like interfering with the portrait mode now uh, to switch between different modes. Also very, very nice option here. Uh, swipe down is doing nothing as far as I can tell. And yeah, all the other settings, you have to really go and uh, search your settings app and then you can go and search for your camera application and then you have to set up or can set up more. Where is it actually? There it is, camera. And there I can set up more, like for example, the default record video option. I'm not sure why they're doing like this because for example, this here, is the vivo and the vivo has a very nice camera interface as well you can also switch in video mode the uh, various different frame rates and resolutions but you also have directly the option here underneath to directly set your default resolution and frame rate why is that not an option on ios so why not making it uh, an option here i don't get it so you have to go in here and then i can set okay i want 4k 30 as the default uh, recording uh, frame rate and um, the same for, for slow-mo and record and there are the formats that I can set like the most compatible or high efficiency and preserve settings I have the possibility to do. Why is it hidden there still in the settings? So if they are doing a redesign of the camera application and the whole operating system, why they don't allow us to have a quick button that is giving us the settings immediately from within the camera app, why do I have to navigate to the system settings myself to find it there? And yeah, I can turn on the grid, I can turn on the level and mirror the front camera if I want to. And there are some indications as well for flash and live photo that I can turn on. So yeah, I want to have the live photo indicator because I want to know if I'm taking a live photo or a real photo. And uh, yeah, the, the prior is faster shooting mode is here on board Smart HDR and probably on the newer iPhone models, there's probably some more settings there available as well. But those are the settings for the camera application. And uh, yeah, if I switch to the camera application, this is basically a quick overview over the camera application. We have also the selfie, where you can see me recording. And uh, yeah, I have now the live indicator for uh, taking live photos where I can directly see and turn it on and off. So if you're missing this and you don't know about the swipe up feature, it is now available there as a quick toggle on the top right corner as well. I hope that they will allow us to add a little bit more settings there. Maybe they will also allow us with this button here to have maybe this flash button if this is enabled here or the live mode is enabled there to turn it off and use it for something else. Like for example, like I said, turning on the other settings like the default video ratio, for example, or some other possibilities or directly a button that is set that says settings and it directly jumps into the settings app onto the right page and I can see my settings and change them. This would be uh, what I really, really would like to have yeah, otherwise we have here our photos that we can uh, see. Actually, this is a nice little bug. No, it's a video that it was uh, recording before. Uh, so we can see the nice new video player there with the liquid glass. And it's still even beta 4, not very readable. You can see black icons on this glass. Now it's like readable when it's, uh, when it's like getting black. It's not very readable. So yeah, it's a bit of a problem still. I think uh, that they have to figure out because like, the, the buttons here on the top, you can see it is now white because the background is black of the video and it is getting black. I hope you can see it. It's getting black now when, I, when it gets to the white background. Uh, but the buttons down below, the quick actions for sharing, for editing and so on in this video are not. So this is like still a liquid glass issue there. Nevertheless, this was my rundown of the camera application and it's not only looking like this on the iPhone SE, the oldest device that still runs iOS 4, 24, 26 actually, but also on newer devices 
So what do you think about this new camera application? Is this an improvement? Is it helping your workflow or is it dumbing down the camera application even further? There's not even a zoom button anymore. Keep that in mind. All the other phones have a zoom button. So you can change between different focal lengths here. You notice that this is missing on the on this iPhone. It's, why is it missing? <laughs> because this one has only one camera. So that means maybe if you have a newer device, there will be a zoom button still. But yeah, you have the possibility to manually zoom in here with pinch to zoom as well. So yeah. Uh, but for those people who are asking yourself, hey, they even removed the zoom buttons. No, it's just simply because there's only one camera lens, so there's no option to switch between cameras. That's it now, for real, for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have some questions, put them down in the link below. Until the next time, have a good time. Bye. And I'm editing this video here on the Xperia 1 Mark 6 that I recorded this video with as well. As you can see here, it is attached to the region where my laptop is attached via this cable and a Dell docking station, which now works. The predecessor still didn't have the possibility to mirror the screen, so I always had to rely on yeah, a few a bunch of cables and uh, such kind of docking stations uh, or USB Type-C things, but this is now working here fine and I can use KineMaster to edit this video, which I'm doing right now. For some reason my Huawei Pure X decided to go on here. No, I was just testing the longevity of it, like screen on time with the outer display. And there's some interesting videos as well. You can see there's a nice little bug that when I'm on the website, because the YouTube app is not working here on the... I know Google apps are working or Android apps are working on the other screen. On the website, it's like cutting off like a black bar for some reason. I don't know why it's doing this, but uh, yeah, anyway. If you are interested in this here, I have to like open it up, maybe like this, go to here. 16 percentage and screen on time is 7 hours and 31 minutes. And it's like about 95% usage, not of this screen here, but of this screen. Because if I only would use, I did this already, the other way around, 95% the inner screen, I would have used a lot more juice and come around like five to six hours only. And then it's completely flat and empty. And now I have like two to three, maybe even four hours more if I only use the front screen. Just a small little outtake about that, uh, why this was running there in the background and it still should be running identify me and maybe go again to the YouTube slide just to test out and you find a screenshot soon probably on Twitter also. Bye for real.